This election season is really shaping up to be like no other, evidenced by the fact that, among other things, the latest numbers have just come out, and they show that President Trump has spent nearly $50 million in legal fees just last year alone. That particular number, it comes from the recent filings that were made with the Federal Election Commission, and they showed that, quote, former President Donald Trump used more than $47 million in campaign funds to cover legal expenses in the year 2023. Two groups associated with President Trump, Save America and Make America Great Again, Inc., paid off more than 350 different transactions to more than 50 law firms, consultancies, and individuals for legal services and consulting. Furthermore, if you go back one more year, it shows that President Trump, has spent more than $76 million over the last two years on attorneys. Now, it's a little hard to find data on these types of things, but I would imagine that with numbers like these, President Trump might actually hold the record for the most money spent on legal fees by a single person in American history. And so, given the fact that the majority of the political donations are being spent on these different legal challenges, well, covering this year's election pretty much revolves around covering the developments in the different legal challenges that President Trump is currently facing. And so in today's episode, let's go through the major developments in three of these cases, starting over in Colorado. This upcoming Thursday, which for your reference is February the 8th, the U.S. Supreme Court will be hearing oral arguments in Trump's ballot access case. This was the case which came out of Colorado after the Colorado State Supreme Court claimed that Trump was ineligible to run for office as per Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. That case was, of course, appealed by Trump's legal team to the U.S. Supreme Court, who then agreed to hear it on an expedited timetable. And indeed, the timetable really is expedited, evidenced by the fact that, for one, if you look at the U.S. Supreme Court's schedule, the one that they maintain over on their website, this upcoming Thursday, not only are they scheduled to hear oral arguments in this particular case, but also on that very same day, they're also scheduled to issue their actual opinion on the matter. And also secondly, the U.S. Supreme Court just agreed to give the Colorado Secretary of State a cool 10 full minutes to argue why Trump should be blocked from the ballot. Quote, Colorado Secretary of State Ms. Jenna Griswold, a Democrat and fierce Trump critic, has filed multiple briefs with the U.S. Supreme Court. In a January 26 filing with the U.S. Supreme Court, Ms. Griswold asked for enlargement and division of time for oral arguments at a hearing this Thursday so that she could have time to provide the court with an important perspective on Colorado's election laws. The Supreme Court said in its decision that it would grant Ms. Griswold just 10 minutes to make her case for why, according to her subsequent January 31st filing, President Trump supposedly engaged in an insurrection and so should be barred from appearing on Colorado's presidential ballot. Now, in regards to what Ms. Jenna Griswold might say during her 10 minutes, well, her opinion on President Trump is not really a state secret. In fact, during a recent interview over on CNN, here's what she said, quote, regardless if Trump is on the ballot or not, he is a danger to American democracy. And then also she released a separate statement from her own office saying the following, quote, Donald Trump engaged in insurrection and was disqualified under the constitution from the Colorado ballot. The Colorado Supreme Court got it right. And so she will now have a cool 10 full minutes to try and convince the U.S. Supreme Court that President Trump should be prohibited from running for office again. Now, aside from the 10 minutes that Ms. Griswold was able to carve out for herself, President Trump's legal team will be given 40 minutes to present their oral arguments, while the other side will be given 30 minutes to present theirs. And like most U.S. Supreme Court cases, this one will not be televised. There will be no cameras present in the room. However, the oral arguments will be audio recorded, and then the audio recordings should be made available very likely on that very same day over on the U.S. Supreme Court website. Meaning, in practical terms, that by Thursday of this week, we can expect to not only have the transcripts from this trial, but also an actual decision for the whole nation regarding the question of whether or not the 14th Amendment bars Trump from running for office. So consider marking your calendar for that, again, the upcoming Thursday, February the 8th. And now let's switch gears a bit and move on over to Fulton County, Georgia, in order to discuss the RICO case against President Trump and 18 of his associates. Although for the past month now, the RICO charges against Trump and his associates, they've taken a bit of a back seat to the allegations that Ms. Fannie Willis, who is the district attorney of Fulton County, she was having an affair with a special prosecutor and was allegedly benefiting financially from the case against Trump. If you actually want a deeper breakdown of those allegations, we covered them in much greater depth in our prior episode, which I'll throw a link to down in the description box below, which I should mention is that same description box right below those like and subscribe buttons, both of which I hope you take a quick moment to smash. Regardless.